what matters is these big moments. That is what fans remember. And we didn't do that. We don't perform in the big games because we don't have big players anymore. I don't give a shit we finished in second place. I want us to be winning trophies. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Rave Green TV. And uh, the season's over. Uh, that's the end of it. We lose to LAFC in the playoffs. Am I super surprised? Not really. Was I surprised of the performance? Not really. I mean, I mean, we all knew going into this match, Dennis Buanga was was going to be the big danger man. It's not about Vela anymore. It's not about Ilya Sanchez. It's not about Kellen Acosta. It's Dennis Buanga. I guess and Maxime Crapo. He made a couple of pretty good saves. I mean, he scores LAFC lockdown. I mean, we had to have gone a goal in this game. The problem was all season we haven't been able to score against LAFC. So what was Brian going to do a little bit differently in this match? Nothing. He actually played the exact same lineup we played all throughout the playoffs, which shocks me because I know Liao Chu has had a better season this year in MLS, but he's had, he had three stinkers in a row against FC Dallas, and guess what kind of performance he put out today? Another stinker against LAFC. He was non-existent in this match. He should have been subbed out even a little bit sooner. He should have been subbed out straight at half. And I think that's what kills us is, you know, we don't take our chances early on in the game. Morris has the best chance of the match. hes I'm sorry, but he's just not a striker. The fact that it's a perfect opportunity to shoot with your left foot. We know he's not confident with it. He hesitates a lot when that opportunity comes, and he obviously shoots with his right. Crepo, yes, makes a great save, but those that's the thats the moneymaker moments. Those are the moments that he gets paid. That's why we renewed his contract, wasn't it? So he can score those goals. He didn't do it. I mean, Alex Roldan, I mean, I don't know what the tactics were. I mean, we know Buanga is going to be a killer in this game, and obviously Brian Schmetzer didn't tell Alex Roldan, hey, maybe don't bomb up the field so much. He got caught up the field. Buanga takes his one chance. And I'm sorry, but, like, are we really going to get mad at LAC for time wasting? Because if the roles were reversed, we would do the same thing probably. We fell into their trap. We knew LAC were going to get needing one goal. They got their goal. They knew we were going to be able to score a goal if they hunkered back on defense. So they did what they had to do. And it sucks because I feel like these past two years in MLS – We've kind of just been throwing away all of our great records, like one of them being we've never lost to LAFC in the playoffs. Well, that one's gone, and that was one of my favorite ones because I hate LAFC. I hate their fans. I don't like the club. We all know they're truly Chivas USA, and we just threw away that one at home. It just sucks because we played in, played in their hands. We truly did. Playing the same lineup four games in a row probably wasn't the greatest idea because, you know, this is a different team. This isn't FC Dallas. It's LAFC. You got to try something a little bit more different in the game. I know we don't necessarily have much personnel to switch around with, but maybe starting Ladero, who had three pretty good games against FC Dallas, might have been a better idea than Liao Chu, who had three stinkers against FC Dallas. I'm not saying make a massive change, but I think those little things, the playoffs, it's, you know, you have small margin for error in the MLS Cup playoffs. That is a fact. Small margin for error. And that was the difference. LAC took their chance. They held on on defense. That's been the theme of our season. We don't take chances. We just have meaningless possession. We don't do anything with it, and that's what costs us. It costs us in the Club World Cup. It costs us in the Open Cup. It's what costs us in our MLS regular season to not be supporter shield contenders, and it costs us in the playoffs. It sucks because we had, what, four trophies we could have won this season, and we flaked out of every single competition. Granted, FIFA Club World Cup was something new, but I'm going to be honest, we had a pretty good opportunity at least maybe win in round one to at least face off against Real Madrid. Open Cup, we haven't made a deep run in that shit since God knows how long ago. The Supporter Shield, we have a team that can compete for the Supporter Shield technically on paper, but we didn't even, even remotely get close to that. I mean, in the Eastern Conference, we would have finished in like seventh place with the amount of points we had. We were not in competition. The, any Eastern Conference team would have clapped us. And today in the playoffs... Yeah, we beat, I think a big improvement is we made the playoffs because I thought it was going to be close. Kind of was. It was touch and go at some points in the season, in all honesty, with how bad we were in run of games. Oh, I can't forget about League's Cup, too. We got bounced on the group stage of that. That was pitiful as well. So it's like we're not – obviously we've lost that edge with Brian where he's a good, like, playoff competition manager because that was his bread and butter is these knockout round games in the playoffs. But obviously – I mean, single elimination – 
we obviously lost that touch at home. We're 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 a, kind of a shit team at home now, which is really weird. We are not a good team at home. Most teams can come here, get wins. I mean, and we've seen that all season, and that's what's frustrating. I think tactics are fucking trash. They are so trash from Brian. They, meaningless possession. If a team scores first, they're probably not gonna concede again. Uh, not gonna concede a goal against us because we can't fucking score. Because Morse is not a striker. Raul's just shit. Nico's not that creative spark anymore. Leo Chu can only do it against the shit teams like Colorado Galaxy and Kansas City when they were dog shit. Christian Roldan, too many concussions. JP, fucking savior. Rustak when given a free roll, a lot better. Like, there are, there are some players that deserve to be in this team. Defense, pretty solid. Obviously, each individual defender can have their shocking moments, which we have seen throughout the time of the season. Alex Rodon sometimes can't defend. Yamar can't save, pass the ball to save his life. Jackson Reagan has boneheaded mistakes. New who, I mean, the game against Dallas in game two might have been a prime example. Seven Fry is always a brick wall. But nonetheless, the season's over. It sucks. We lost to LAC. We lost that record. And it's not a big deal. Maybe this is a slight reality check that we needed where, like, we're just not a playoff team anymore. Yeah, we we did we just did what we had to this season. This is the time for Brian and Craig Weibel to now, you know, do their thing. Now this is your opportunity. Hella players are going to be out of contract. We'll have a cup, uh, one to possibly three DP spots open. This is a huge opportunity off season. Brian will obviously be the coach next year because I believe he still is in contract next year. I don't know the exact details on his contract, but I, he will be here for sure for next season. It's 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 now or never for us because I think we are becoming a team that is slightly, slowly starting to fall off the pace with MLS teams. I believe we are. And if we keep up a complacency like this, I think we could fall even shorter. I know we finished in second. That was great. One thing that does piss me off, though, is there was the press conference at the end of the game against St. Louis where Brian was like, You know, my good friend and my partner, uh, Craig, took a little bit of heat midseason. Uh, about not making any big moves. And he believed in this group of players. Coaching staff believed in this group of players. And for us to, you know, end on a high note, nine games unbeaten, to come into a really tough environment to play, uh, kudos goes out to Craig and the coaching staff for, you know, presenting this club with an opportunity to do some damage in the playoffs. Dude, I don't give a shit you guys finish in second place in the dog shit Western Conference. When it came to the big games against, when it came against the big teams in the big games, we didn't show up at all this season and the playoffs. I mean, what matters is these big moments. That is what fans remember. And we didn't do that. We don't perform in the big games because we don't have big players anymore. I don't give a shit we finished in second place. I want us to be winning trophies, Open Cups, Leagues Cups, uh, Supporter Shields, MLS Cups. Who the fuck? No one remembers who finishes in second place. They remember the teams that win trophies. We're not that team. So I was ticked by Brian when I heard that shit of... Oh, we got a lot of criticism. You guys should get a lot of criticism. You guys made shit signings in the offseason in Eber, who you didn't even fucking trust to bring on in this game when we were losing in the winner go home match. You didn't even trust the new signing that's supposed to be the difference maker to come on in this game. He basically was, Eber was like, if he was an option A, option B, option C, he's like option D or F. That's what Eber was. You guys fucked the signings up. You, I mean, you guys just had a mid as fuck season. You guys beat the bad teams. You did okay against some of the mid teams. You really couldn't do shit against the good teams. And then we, when it came to the playoffs, we did what we had to do against Dallas. But then when we came up against a team that came in with a plan, because that is the reality, they came in with a plan. They knew they were going to have one or two opportunities, which we did too, but we don't have players like Buanga. We don't have a player like Buanga or Vela when he was in his prime. We don't have players like that anymore. Our team is... Not the same team as before. So clearly, I hope this is a wake-up call to be like, hey, Nico's already going to be gone. Raul might be gone. There might be another DP spot. A bunch of players are going to be out of contract. I think it's a huge opportunity. And a lot of these young kids, if you're not going to play them on a consistent basis, why not sell them to the European teams that might be interested in them and then bring in more young players, and then you can sell them as well. You can play them, 
but then sell them for big money. Make the money buy players. You, I'm not asking for us to buy fucking Messi, but like for example, like a player like Buanga, he came from a mid-table team in League A, I believe Saint Etienne. He's got over 40 goal contributions this season. Over 40. We don't even have the whole team doesn't have over 40 goal contributions this season. One man. That's the difference makers, is those kind of players. It's like Buanga, and we don't have players like that. Same thing can be said for the Houston Dynamo, who they'll face off. They got players like Ache Ache, uh, Carasquilla. Same thing can be said for Columbus, Cucho, Christian Ramirez, Diego Rossi. They lose a player like Zell around, no problem. We'll bring in Diego Rossi, no problem at all. SC Cincinnati, Brandon Vasquez, Luciano Ocaso, we're not that team. We were realistically not going to be winning an MLS Cup with the team that we have. We did what we had to do. We did the bare minimum. But if we keep up the complacency, we're going to slowly start sinking away and peeling away from our success. So this is going to be the opportunity in the offseason for us to be big, to be big in this 50th anniversary. There might be some growing pains. If we make the changes that I'm hoping us to see, there will be growing pains. But if Brian is not going to tactically be any different with new players then some of that blame a lot of those blame that fans are not happy about is gonna come down to him as well so that's kind of my thoughts on tonight's match boys and girls my opinion only matters so much let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below it has been a wonderful season from us i mean from top to bottom we did it another season completed on rave green tv i appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart we're on the road to 1,000 subscribers i'm gonna try to hit that by the end of the off season that's the goal there's still going to be plenty of content during the offseason, some fun stuff. So make sure to obviously be subscribed if you're a Sounders fan, as you should. And let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Smash the like button on today's video because I was freezing my cheeks off doing all these fan cams, reviews out here in the cold. But it's over for us. And boys and girls, I hope you all have a lovely day.